It's Professor Hui. Today I'm going to explain using my car Tesla about how power and energy would work to move the Tesla. So let me let's see the power system of the Tesla. Here we have about 7,000 uh, batteries connected together to provide a amount of power that is almost 215 kilowatt to move this Tesla. So let's just have a look at the calculation here. What we have here, power P is equal to current times the voltage. Now this comes from what we learned a little bit earlier, whereby energy, W, is generated if you move a, a charge Q, Coulomb, across a an electric field that has a voltage difference of V. And so what you have is that if you take the amount of energy divided by time, and that's equal to power, and that's equal to dQ, dT, or the current flow over time, that's equal to I times V. So therefore we have this relationship, power equal to current times voltage, is given by really a definition of energy given out by moving electric charge across a voltage field. So what we have here, today we're going to talk about the power convention, which is if you have this is basically uh, batteries, and you have here a motor, and if this is the positive and the negative, and suppose in this Tesla car here, you have a voltage of 755, 70, 375 volt, and then you have the current I going through a voltage V in the motor. In a sense, because I goes into the positive terminal of the motor, so if we have a voltage of 375 volt, and then the current is 600 ampere. If you multiply the two together, you will get a to total of 225 kilowatt of power. We call this a positive because you have a positive current flowing into the positive terminal of the device. It corresponds to a dissipation of electrical energy. In this case, you are converting the electrical energy into the kinetic energy of the car. And we're going to do a little bit of calculation later on about how fast it would move the car. Now, if on the other hand, in the process of charging the car, we would have the batteries, plus and minus here, but we would have actually either the motor, when the motor is breaking, to reverse the current back into the batteries. In this case here, really, we would have a power that is negative because the current now is negative from the point of view of the motor. And therefore, the power actually is then now become minus 225 kilowatt if the current is reverse direction. What this is done is that the kinetic motion of the car will be changed back into electrical energy. So there is a generation of electrical energy and therefore it's a negative power from a point of view of the motor. On the other hand, the current is flowing into the battery and therefore there is a dissipation of the electrical power to convert that power into chemical energy that is storing the uh, energy back into a chemical form. Right now I'm inside the Tesla, so we're going to test drive the Tesla. So you see here basically two meter. On the right hand side, what you see is a meter that shows the kilowatt hour, kilowatt that power that is consumed by the car. If you swing to the right, it means that electrical energy is converted into kinetic energy. If you swing to the left on the green area, it was uh, convert the kinetic energy through braking into electrical energy, which in turn is then stored in the battery system of the car. So let's just survey the car and see how it's going. It's 
See, it's breaking and therefore it's in the green area now. So we're coming here gradually to a full stop as the car is doing regenerative braking. What you see here are some more meters. What you have here is that it's showing that the car can have an efficiency of using only 223 watt hour for each mile. Uh, there's also a power meter over there here that shows uh, the level of power being used over time. Now, if we go to another meter, you will also see uh, the energy consumption as well as the amount of energy that is left in the car, which is 28.7 kilowatt hour that is left. And remaining driving time uh, would be about, uh, it would be able to go about another 100 miles based on that charge. If you look further, uh, we also indicate uh, how, many, how many miles you can have uh, remaining in the car. So let's just also show a, uh, yet a third meter that indicates the g-force as well as the horsepower as well as the amount of torque that is produced by the car. And let's just say I sorry the car again to see how, uh, the amount of g-force that is experienced by the car. So we have a pretty nice rise and let's just do some analysis about what we just learned from driving the car. What we saw basically that through the from the meter we have a G force that is roughly 0.6 G experienced uh, by our acceleration. Now 0.6 G will correspond to an acceleration of 6 meter per second squared. Now let's say over a four second, the speed V would be equal to six meter per second squared times four second, and therefore it's equal to 24 meter per second. And that actually trans translate to a, uh, is equal then to 86 kilometer per hour, which roughly is slightly less than 9, uh, 60 miles per hour. So as advertised, the Tesla in fact can accelerate from 0 to 60 in less than 4 seconds. Pretty fast car. Next, we're going to look at uh, some of the parameter with the Tesla. The Tesla has an energy storage of 53 kilowatt hour. And you have 99 batteries in series to form a sheet. So the voltage altogether is 99 times roughly 3.7 of uh, 3.8 volt per battery, giving you roughly a battery voltage of 375 volt. Now the sheets are placed in parallel. One sheet has 399 of these batteries and forming a 375 volt altogether. And all these 11 sheets of battery would make the current flow at a total of roughly, so the current is say, a maximum current flow could be roughly equal to 600 ampere. Also, the weight of the car including the driver, is roughly about 1,500 uh, kilograms. So what I'm going to do is uh, several calculations. And the first one we're going to calculate is the power that is generated by the Tesla. Now, we actually have done it before. As we said, power is equal to current times voltage. And therefore, if you multiply the two, which is 335 volt times 600 uh, ampere, that gives you 225 kilowatt. So the 225 kilowatt is roughly 
uh, about 300 horsepower. Now, another thing we're going to do is to calculate the kinetic energy of the car when it reaches 60 miles an hour, or roughly uh, 90 kilometers per hour. Now, the kinetic energy, as we know, is equal to one half of mv squared. So it's equal to one half of times 1,500 kilogram times velocity, in this case here, would be uh, roughly about 90, uh, let's say, let's just keep it at 100 kilometer per hour squared, okay? So if we also look at the power from the battery, and assuming that we have the maximum power output, P, equal to 225 kilowatt, so over time t, the energy would be equal to, uh, or w, equal to p times t, and that's equal to 225 kilowatt times the time. So what we're interested in is to find t such that p times t is equal to one half of mv squared. You plug P equal to 225 kilowatt, and you calculate the amount of time that would achieve this amount of kinetic energy given here. And the answer is that basically you have T equal to 2.6 seconds. In other words, with a power of 225 kilowatt supply over 4 seconds, it would move the car from a velocity of 0 kilometer per hour to a maximum speed of 100 kilometer per hour. Now, what we saw earlier is that it took about four seconds to achieve the test, the, to accelerate the Tesla from zero to about 60 miles an hour, or about 90 kilometers per second uh, per hour. The difference here primarily is because the power supplied by, by the motor is not a constant. Actually, at the beginning, it's drawing out a very small current and therefore the amount of torque uh, produced, even though it's very large, the amount of work being done, as we know that work is equal to force times distance moved, uh, the amount of work done is very small. So that's why it doesn't uh, give you an acceleration of 2.6 seconds, but rather uh, a time of about 4 seconds to accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour.